Hey everyone, welcome back to Daddy Did You Win? Uh, I haven't done one of these videos in a long time. Usually I've been doing more of the uh, race highlight videos and stuff like that. But uh, we're getting into marathon season right now. And for me, uh, marathon season looks a little bit different than what it used to. Um, no longer going after the PRs or anything like that. Those days are behind me. Now... I am solely focusing really on pacing. Once in a while, I might do a marathon for time, that sort of thing. But right now, I am really enjoying pacing. And so I'm going to do two videos uh, coming up here soon. Today's the first one. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about how you as a runner who's maybe doing their first marathon or has a goal um, to PR or to even get a Boston qualifying time, how do you use a pacer uh, to your benefit and uh, what does that look like and just some tips and tricks on how to use pacers. So let's go ahead and get started on the first video. So you've got all your, your training done. You are ready to go. You are ready to knock out this marathon. You get to the expo and that's actually where your first step can begin when you're dealing with a pacer. A lot of marathons will have a table set up at their expo um, that will have pacers there. They will be there instructing you on what pace groups they're offering uh, at the race. Uh, they may even have a binder uh, with information about pacers, who's doing what pace group. And they might, usually if they have this binder, they will also have a picture of that runner. Uh, that way you have an idea of who to look for on race morning. So you get, you may, your pacer may not be there at the expo. They might have volunteered earlier uh, in the day. Uh, but at the same time, they might be there. You might get, be able to meet them in person. Um, I've done that before uh, where I have met runners who planned on running with me uh, for the marathon. And it just kind of gives you an, an idea of who you're running with. Um, and uh, that way you also recognize them on race morning. So it's race morning now, and you are getting ready to get in your corrals. Typically, your pacers are already in their corrals. Uh, depending on the race, um, some races, they may not uh, move their pacers into the corrals until about 5 to 10 minutes before the race starts. Others, fifteen it could be 45 minutes early, and they are already telling their pacers to move into their corrals. That way, uh, one, the pacers are getting spread out to where they should be starting. It helps uh, all the other runners find where they should be starting. And uh, it also gives you an opportunity to once again meet your pacer and you get that time to ask questions. And that's what you should be doing. Introduce yourself to your pacer. I'm not going to lie. A lot of times, especially if we have a large group of uh, runners in our pace group, we're going to forget your name. But at the same time, this is your opportunity to ask questions. And questions you should be asking what is the pacer strategy on this day? Now, for me, uh, when I'm pacing a marathon, now granted, I've only paced five marathons. I've got my sixth one coming up in 20 days from the day I'm filming this video. But I want, if I'm running with a pacer, I want to know, what's your strategy? Um, usually, it should be they're going to want to run as even as possible. If you are, if your pacer says, we're going to start off fast, we're going to bank time, uh, meaning that we're going to run ahead of schedule that way. If, if we start slowing down at the end, we have time. You may want to think about whether or not you want to run with that pacer or not. Um, when when you run with the pacer, do so at your own risk. Uh, but for me, I like to try to get into that uh, desired pace as soon as possible. Also, what's your strategy for aid stations? Are you going to be walking through aid stations? Actually, and when you get into the slower uh Goal paces such as four hours, four ten, anything past that, you're going to be talking about possibly some walk breaks in there, which is not a bad thing. Um, if your pacer says we're going to walk through aid stations, they're doing that one because maybe your time is already fast. They know it's going to be fast, so let's give yourself a little break. But two, it gives you an opportunity to make sure you're getting the fluids that you need inside. But let's face it, when you're running, getting fluids is not easy. You're spilling it all over yourself and that sort of thing. Walking through an aid station, not a bad idea. Um, just allows you to make sure you're getting all the fluids and and uh, and whatever else that you may need into your system. It may seem like you're slowing yourself down in the long run, but in the long run, you're making sure that you're staying hydrated and everything else that you need to make it to the finish and finish strong. Also, ask them about the course. Um, as a pacer, you should, uh, whether you ran the marathon or not, 
uh, you should have some idea of what this course is like. I like to, st if it's a new marathon for me, I study the map. I study the elevation gain and such and make sure that I know what's ahead. Um, for instance, Toledo Glass City Marathon is what I'm running in 20 days. And I, it's been five years since I've ran that marathon. So I know I've ran the course, but it's been a while and I've only ran it once. So I've been looking at the map. I've been looking at the elevation gain and I know where the highest point on this course is. And it's about 15 and a half miles. After that, it's a net downhill, uh, net, net negative gain uh, to the finish. Are there hills still on, uh, after that? Absolutely, there are. But knowing and being able to give my pace group that information that, hey, this is the highest point. It's uh, There's still some hills, but there's a lot of downhill from here. That is valuable information to be able to pass up on your on to uh, your runners that you are with. So know the so ask some questions about the course, um, especially if they have ran that race several times. They know it, and they should be prepared to answer questions for you about it and uh, give you an idea of where hills are and stuff like that. So the next thing, there's two of them really that go hand in hand together here. One, give your pacer some space. And this is especially true at the beginning of the race. Um, when you are just starting off and you're all packed up, your pacer's already trying to weave in and out because let's face it, not everybody is starting the race where they should. There's some people who are uh, who are ahead of you that should have been starting behind you. And as a pacer and just as you as a runner, you're trying to weave back and forth in and out. Give your pacer some space to uh, be able to zigzag through that as well and just follow them. That's what they're there for is for you to follow them until you are ready to run the rest of the race on your own. Um, along with that, though, is, like I said, follow them, uh, especially on a windy day. Use them to block your wind, block the wind for you. Um, that's what that's what we're there for. Uh, monumental this year in November. Uh, we were dealing with 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts, and believe me, I had people fought, uh, um, you know right on my back um, during those hard times. And it honestly it, it zapped me of energy. Um, I didn't have anybody block the wind for me. Everybody was using me. Uh, made it for a tough day for me, but hopefully it allowed others to reach their goals as well, which is what I'm there for as a pacer. Um, but like I said, make sure you give them room. Don't make a pacer work harder than they have to. But at the same time, use the pacer, let them block your wind, block the wind for you, make it easier on yourself. Next, if you're using a pacer, do not panic at the beginning. If a pacer is too fast at the start, it happens. Okay, we are all trying to get into a rhythm and everything else. And once again, with the crowds, that's difficult in the first few miles. So do not panic if you're fast. Same goes for if you're slow. Really do not panic if you're slow because believe me, you're saving up energy. You'll make that time up. And if you're fast, you'll make you'll the pacer will adjust his pace so that his or her pace so that you are getting back to where you should be. So do not panic in the first few miles. Now, obviously, if you're still seeing this halfway through the race, then you got to start questioning what's going on, um, if, especially if you're going too fast. You're going to want to back yourself down. But at the same time, do not panic early. Next, feel free to leave the pace group when you are ready. You are under absolutely no obligation to stick with the pacer that you are with. Um, if they are going, uh, if if at the early, beginning stage of the race, you thought, I'm ready to run a 330 marathon. And uh, after the first couple of miles, you're like, you know, this, this doesn't feel right. I feel like I'm going too fast. I need to back off. Back off. You can drop back to the next pace group and pick them up. Totally acceptable. And there's nothing wrong with that. Same thing if you're feeling great. If you think, oh my word, I thought I was going to run 330, but I am ready for a 320. Start picking it up. It's going to be harder for you to catch that next pace group, especially the further and further you get into the race. But... Uh, you know, if you feel it, run your race. Just do what you think is best for you. Now, what I will also say to that is that when you get to miles 20 to 24, that's when you really should start feeling in your body that either one, this is comfortable for me. This is where I should be. Or, you know, then, or there's the, this is hurting me. And if I don't, if I don't stick with this pace group, I'm going to really fall back. 
then stay with the pace group for those two situations. Just do it. It's fine. Um, that's what we're there for. But if you're feeling great for that last 10K and you're just like, I've got a lot of energy. I am ready to go. I'm ready to drop the hammer. Do it. You are under an absolutely no obligation to stay with your pacer, um, especially if you're feeling great. Just go run your race and do the best you can. Go after that PR. Try to see how many minutes faster you can beat your PR and just go. Just ditch us. That's fine. That's what we're there for and that's what we want to see out of you. And the last tip is thank your pacer. After you're done running, um, just go up and say thank you. If you want a picture, that's fine. We'll we'll be glad to take pictures. It's happened. Um, you know, pacer wants to remember the or the runner wants to remember the pacer who actually got them to their goal and stuff like that. Encourage them the whole way. That's what we're there for. We want to be there to encourage you to make your goal. We're going to push you as much as we can to help you reach that. And just a simple thank you is enough. Um, a pacer is uh, giving their time. Um, they have put aside, set aside their goals or uh, their own race to help you. So just give them a thank you. Uh, that's all, that's all we really, we don't even ask for it, but it's much appreciated uh, to be thanked for uh, the work that you, that we did to help you reach your goal. And um, if you decide to leave us in the last 10 K and uh, you see us after we finish, Go ahead, come up to us, say thank you. Um, you know, nothing wrong with that. And once again, we we greatly appreciate it. We want to hear about your race, especially if you did leave us, hear how you finished. And uh, uh, we want to celebrate those accomplishments with you. So as a pacer, though, we're here to help set the pace for you. Um, and and to, once again, help you reach your goal. Um we don't want to, we don't want to push you to go too fast or too slow. We want to make sure that they that we are there just to uh, guide you and to pace you. And you gotta run the race though for yourself, however that may look. So um, we're also there just to provide you with moral support, um, encourage you. A pacer will talk to you as much or as little as you want during uh, during a race. So keep that in mind as well uh, when running with a pacer. Like I said, we're there for you. Um, we want to, we want to help you do your best. So, um, next video, uh, we're going to look at the other side of pacing from the pacer standpoint, uh, how to become a pacer, um, the benefits of being a pacer, as well as, uh, just some of the other, uh, rewards of being a pacer. So, um, that video will be coming out here shortly as well, but until next time, thank you guys very much for watching and we'll see you later.